Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm gonna to be talking about some fun updates to all my adeniums that I have. I have a bunch of them that I've grown from seed over the years. And I kind of just wanna show what I've got um, and I wanna talk about some of the care that they require. And I also want to harvest some adenium seeds off of one of my adeniums. So um, we have a lot of fun stuff to talk about and all has to do with adeniums, so let's get to it. So I don't know how many adeniums I have, um, probably quite a few, maybe like 25 or so. But it all started from buying a pack of seeds from um, a, an adenium seller in Thailand. And since then, that was probably about 2015, maybe 2014, um, and I've been growing them ever since. I've learned a lot along the way, so I'm kind of happy to describe some of the um, things I've learned along the way. So I have several adeniums at different stages of life right now, so I thought it'd be fun to go through them and kind of describe um, the process that they grow in. Um, these are caudiciforms, or they grow and form caudixes, which are very um, succulent stems. That's a really smart evolutionary technique that allows them to store excess moisture and nutrients in their stem. Um, that can be really helpful at other points when it's not um, the rainy season, for example. And I have several that are actually flowering right now. Um, we had a storm last night, so they're all kind of banged up and ugly, and a few of them even um, totally went down, but they're totally resilient plants. So these are part of the dogbane family, and I'll talk a little more about that, but what I usually do to sow them is I use a pretty low profile flat, and I just put in some you know, pretty decent, quickly draining um, soil in here. I amend it with a lot of perlite or expanded shale. Some gravel is great too, um, or vermiculite. I keep it pretty shallow because it allows for the water to drain very quickly through, um, and the adenes don't seem to mind. The seedlings are also very amenable to transplanting, so like I probably laid them all out there and then I moved them in a big group right here to a deeper plant so they can develop um, more extensive roots. Um, they also don't really mind being grouped up in a smaller container, but I'm sure they would probably grow faster if you separated each of them. I just ran out of containers. Um, but the great plants, this is probably about two years here. And this is from the same batch. These are all from the same batch of seeds that I got from Thailand. Um, and you can see that they start branching out here and there. Some of them will actually grow much longer. This species right here is Adenium obesum. Um, Adenium obesums actually grow quite tall. Um, Adenium arabicum kind of grows and has a stronger or more developed codex from my um, experiences. You might disagree with me, that's fine. As they get older, the codex will get thicker and larger, um, and that's just kind of how it grows. Um, and that's definitely what you want, actually, because that's why we grow these plants. One thing that I've noticed in my seeds is that some of them will grow tons of arms like this, or what should I call branches. Um, and then some of them will be a little more solitary and only grow maybe one or two. Um, this right here actually has no branches. I don't even know if you can see it over here, but um, it's just one single stem. So I'm not sure if I if it's just a different types of genetics in the seeds or what, but um, that is something to be aware of. After about a couple years, they will start flowering for you. Um, that's assuming you have them outside. They really do like being outside. Um, they need pretty much as much sunlight as you can give them. In the winter, you can bring them in. At that point, I really don't water my adeniums. Um, sometimes I'll feel the codex, and if it's like really spongy, then I'll give them a little bit of water, but um, these plants are designed to withstand um, long periods of drought. Um, but after a couple years, they will start flowering, and I, like I said, you do need them in the sun. These aren't really house plants. Um, some people do have them in the house, but they, in my opinion, they won't do as well until you actually put them outside. Um, they really do love the sun and they love the heat as well. So this is a perfect um, plant if you're in Texas, for example. Um, you just, they are not hardy, so you do have to bring them in um, in the winter. 
During the winter, they will actually lose all their leaves and that actually panics a lot of um, plant owners because they think that their plant is dying. So that's completely normal. This will essentially look like just a naked uh, nub and uh, it won't have um, any leaves or flowers, obviously. Um, but th at that point, that just tells you that it's going dormant. The process to pollinate these um, flowers is actually kind of complicated. So I have done it before in the past, but and I've been successful, it's just very, very difficult because you have to open the flower, rip it open. You have to find um, obviously the pollen and the stamen from two different plants and cross them. And it's not very easy actually. So um, for whatever reason, something is pollinating my adeniums out there and I'm very, very happy. So I'm going to show you, this is one of my pollinated adeniums and I would say this took about two months to get to this point. Um, they developed these long seed pods. The seeds actually have these hairs on them on each end. Um, I'm sure there is a scientific word for that, but it makes them perfect for um, essentially flying in the wind and um, distributing somewhere else. So today I'm going to be harvesting this seed pod right here. So I'm going to change the camera so you can get a better look at what they look like. And it's actually quite beautiful. Okay, so I said they're beautiful because the little hairs actually catch the light very nicely and they kind of shimmer a little bit. I don't know, it just looks really cool to me. So um, let's kind of take a look and see what we have here. Now one technique you can do is that when you see that your seed pod is about to um, open up, you can wrap it with wire and that will help you um, not lose any seeds. I was lucky to actually just catch it right as it was opening, so I brought it inside and that really helped them not spread around. Ooh, girl, look at all this hair. Okay, so that's the dead seed pod. And these are all the seeds that I got from it. It's really, really interesting how these seeds work. Now the seeds themselves are very long in nature and you can actually just pull the little hair off on both sides for preparation. Um, obviously you don't need the hair when you're planting them out yourself. So what I'm going to do is go through each one and meticulously pull each of the little ends off and that will help me prepare it for planting or even storing. I'm sorry but this is a straight up ponytail. Look at this. I'm sure there's like a much easier way to do this but I just don't know what that is. I guess I could probably wrap them and then yank out all the hair at once. Ooh, that kind of works. Okay, after all that, here are all the adenium seeds that I have harvested. So I'm gonna count them and just see how many I got from that pod. So I counted all the seeds and tore off all the little hairs and I ended up with about 119 seeds. So um, that's pretty substantial. I know that sometimes uh, adeniums can set seed and they will be sterile when they're very young still so I'll have to check and see if that's the case here but still that those look good to me and they're about 119 so um, we'll see what happens with that.
The only other thing I want to talk about is that these plants can have um, pests. The biggest problem that I've found beyond, of course, um, rotting in the winter, and that's just, you know, succulents in general, um, is the oleander aphid. Um, and I'm going to put up a few images to show you what those look like. They are bright orange. They're little monsters. Um, and they are actually the same. Um, they're called oleander aphids or milkweed aphids because they attack um, members of the dogbane family and adeniums are actually on that as well. So I have right here a sprig of my milkweed that I have in the front um, and they will attack these and they will also attack these. And you can kind of see the similar shape of leaf um, and it's even more apparent with actual oleanders. Um, I have a large, large oleander bush in the front and it blooms like crazy, but this will, sh this will be good to show you. So here is a flower stalk from a oleander bush and you can actually see the similarities in the flower structure as well. They're very, very similar and they're both poisonous as well, by the way. Um, so the you have to be careful about the oleander aphids one thing that's really great and it's a natural um pesticide is uh ladybugs ladybugs are really good at killing um aphids and oleander aphids in general so i usually let one of the plants just kind of be the the host to all these aphids and then i set some um, ladybugs on them and i can do that as well with my adeniums Other than that, these are very carefree plants. Just remember not to water in the winter or else they have um, they can be susceptible to rot. Um, I also don't really fertilize them that much because they don't really need it. Um, in my experiences, maybe once a season, um, they seem to do perfectly fine. Uh, I actually kind of abuse these plants quite a bit. Um, they'll topple over, completely fall out of their pot, and then I'll just kind of put them back in their pot and I won't really um, worry about if there's roots exposed because essentially this is one large root that's being exposed slowly over time. Every time I replant them, I expose a little bit more. So that's how you can kind of see the really cool um, codex below. But other than that, that's my... Um, video for the adeniums there's a lot to go over but i don't want to make this too long of a video um, if you do get seeds just plant them in a very um, free draining uh, soil and they will and give them heat also these are going to really want heat in order to germinate so put them on a heat mat and they're going to really like that and you can also soak them um, for about eight hours before you sow them so um, other than that these are very fun plants so i hope you enjoyed this episode and i really encourage you to look into getting an adenium otherwise known as the desert rose